The civil war in Sierra Leone saw evil at its peak from gun tutors, destroying private and public infrastructure, raping young girls and women, threatening, looting, maiming, and killing innocent civilians. The military tried its best to reverse the situation, but was ill-prepared. They lacked the required resources, training, and education, and were also outnumbered. As the suffering of innocent boys, girls, and women increased, and their cries became louder, the abled men decided to defend themselves, their families, and their properties. Unfortunately, they were equally not trained and lacked the required resources. Who can rescue these poor innocent men, women, and children from these evil gun tutors? Can the gods of their ancestors or professional military or the leaders of international world order? Today, I want to talk to you on the subject of professional military and its benefits. A professional military is a force with well-trained, educated officers and men equipped with skills and resources to fight and win the nation's wars and contribute to sustain development of its people. In 1991, when the rebels, as we call them, or freedom fighters, as they call themselves, of the Revolutionary United Front, RUF, crossed into Sierra Leone. The Republic of Sierra Leone Military Forces, RSLMF, was ill-prepared. The soldiers were using very old, outdated weapons with small quantity of rusty ammunition. Not every soldier had boots and uniforms. The troops were running months without salaries, staying weeks without ration, and had to live on the jungle. Their morale was very low. The level of training was also very low. The RUF, led by ex-corporal Fode Sanko, backed by Charles Taylor, former warlord of the National Patriotic Front of Liberia. Though ill-trained, we are highly motivated with charms believed to protect them from bullets and bombs. The area fighters were equipped with AK-47 rifles, rocket-propelled grenades, machine guns, and anti-aircraft guns. They had greater firepower than the Republic of Sierra Leone military forces at the time. So the first few months of the war saw the Revolutionary United Front overrunning military positions and taking territories that were, under, that were once under government control. As the soldiers withdrew, the civilians were at the mercy of the RUF fighters. The RUF wasted no time to dismantle government structures and informed the people in those territories that they, the RUF, were now in charge. The defenseless people were now ruled by the power of the gun. These gun tutors terrorized, looted, maimed, raped, and killed the people they claimed they were fighting to set free. As the situation continued to destabilize, civil demonstrations from students ensued in protest of the government's failure to protect its citizens and prevent bad governance and corruption. These protests were responded to by a few young, brave, but inexperienced officers and men who had the country at heart. They overthrew the government. They were highly determined to bring the war and the unnecessary suffering of the masses to an end. The government leaders 
called for mass recruitment, recruitment into the Republic of Sierra Leone military forces. These new recruits were provided with basic training and sent to the war front. Though they made initial gains, their victories did not last long. With more support from the warlord Charles Taylor, the RUF reversed the gains and the war became a series of ding-dong battles. With the stalemate and increased suffering of the masses, the people decided to defend themselves, their children, wives, and properties. Volunteer groups of natives, of native hunters, secret societies called the Tamaboros from the north, the Donsos from Kono, and Kamajos from the south and east of the country sprang up and requested the government to provide them with logistics so that they can bring the war to an end. These fighters were untrained. They relied on charms given to them by their spiritual heads, just like the RUF. These spiritual heads performed rituals and told the fighters that they have been washed and cleansed by the gods of their ancestors. They were now Tama, which means that their bodies were now bulletproof. No bullet or bomb could kill them as long as they abided by, the, by certain laws from their gods. These young men and women believed their spiritual heads took the charms and bravely faced the enemy. Most of them died in their thousands. The worst thing that happened was that these civil defense units admired the RUF in every facet and in no time they began to behave just like them. They started making themselves lords and masters over their communities. They had no knowledge about the law of war or rules of engagement. So they executed suspected area fighters on the spot, less to talk about actual prisoners of war. As the war continued to rage, the area increased its terror and destructive tactics to the point that one of their attacks on my village caused my father to run to the bush where he later died from short period of illness. They also burnt down the university I was attending. Who will rescue Sierra Leone from these evil gun totters? On hearing the news of my father's death and the destruction of my university, I cried until I was drenched in tears. I reckon that it was time to render my service to the nation and my family. As the eldest son of my family, I took the mantle of fatherly responsibility. I had no job and my university was no more. I decided to join the military, an idea which my late father and mother had been totally against. My parents wanted me to study medicine, but with my father dead and gone, there was no one to fund my university education. My mother could not afford to fund my university education as well as take care of all my brothers and sisters who were at primary and high school levels. So in October 1994, I became a cadet officer. I received training from the Republic of Sierra Leone Military Forces instructors, Nigerian Army Assistant Training and Assistant Group NATAG, the Golkas Executive Outcomes for nine full months before commissioning as a second lieutenant and sent to the war front. But prior to that, Around the sixth month of training, the RUF closed in on the capital city of Freetown. The government was so desperate that they almost cut short the training. 
the Army Chief of Staff at the time, Brigadier General Kelly Conte, insisted that we must be allowed to complete the full training package. He said, the worst thing that will happen was for the government to have half baked officers commanding men, more than half of which were also vigilantes and soldiers with crash training. So we are allowed to complete the nine months of training. After graduation, prior to deployment, both my stepdad and pastor sat me down on different occasions and gave me words of wisdom. Both of them were over 60 years and different religious backgrounds and spiritual faith. But their advice were very similar. They said to me, just do your job. Fight to protect the people and save the nation. Do not kill or partake in the suffering of innocent people. Do not bring back what others call war booty. They belong to other people. Read your Bible and pray to the Almighty God for his protection. As I went to the war front, I was assigned a platoon of 30 men. 90% were volunteer civilians, but all of them, soldiers and civilians, believed in charms. They also believed that some of the area fighters could not be killed by bullets or bombs. There was a spiritualist in the town who made the charms for the soldiers. The soldiers believed that he spoke with the gods of their ancestors, and whatever he said to them was from the gods. Before commencing any major operation, he was consulted for advice from the gods. His advice to the soldiers and fighters superseded whatever tactics and training they were given. Even when they saw their friends shot and killed, they still believed in the charms and applied his direction. After few engagements with the RUF, I realized most of them were not trained and they died when they were shot. The real problem had been most of our fighters were not good shooters. They were not hitting the enemy. Additionally, they expose themselves to enemy fire without, with the confidence that they will not die. I told them it was enough of that nonsense. I cannot afford to lose them, and so I was going to train them. And they also, and they will fight according to my instructions and their training tactics, techniques, and procedures, and not that of the old spiritualist. If anyone had problems with my command, he was at liberty to leave my platoon and follow the old spiritualist. All of them decided to stay with me. So I organized the training package and trained them daily. All practical lessons were real life situations and they were expected to make contact with the real enemy. As we started gaining victories over the RUF, more fighters started to join my platoon. As God could have it, the government authorized the brigade commanders to recruit soldiers at their level. I used the opportunity to reward my volunteers by formally enrolling them into the military. The government provided the required uniforms, weapons, and increased ammunition for the new recruits. As soldiers, they were now entitled to salaries. As time went on, I nominated those who were progressing well for promotion. 
these forces continued to serve the military and the nation very well. That said, after the National Provisional Ruling Council, the NPRC government handed over power to a democratically elected government, a group of soldiers who felt aggrieved of certain decisions of the new government decided to take the law into their own hands. Their actions sent the democratically elected government into exile, leaving the governance of the country into their own hands. They called their government the Armed Forces Revolutionary Council, AFRC. Once again, most of the key planners of this action had very little or no education. Their military training was not above section command or squad leader. They had no idea of governance. All efforts by the international community to get these soldiers to hand over power back to the democratically elected government fell on deaf ears. A new era of darkness was about to cover Sierra Leone. As the international community searched for ways to reverse the situation, the economic community of West Africa, states, ECOWAS, the African Union, AU, and the United Nations authorized a Nigerian-led ECOMOG, which is the ECOWAS monitoring group, a military force, to intervene and reinstate the democratically elected government by all means. At that point, the Armed Forces Revolutionary Council, AFRC government, gave the olive branch to the RUF and further invited them to form a coalition and assist and resist ECOMOG. As ECOMOG made initial gains over the Armed Forces Revolutionary Council and RUF coalition, the coalition felt that the civilian populace sided with ECOMOG. So the RUF resorted to increase and more violent terror tactics. They burnt down towns and destroyed infrastructure whenever they were forced to withdraw from any location. It was unfortunate that ECOMO could not decisively defeat the RUF AFRC coalition on the battlefront. As they made a comeback, they maimed, raped, killed innocent civilians. They did the same thing as ECOMO transitioned to UN. The RUF even took UN peacekeepers hostage. The UN almost culminated. Sierra Leone almost became a failed state until the British intervened. Thanks and praise to the Almighty God for the intervention of the British forces. The professionalism of the British forces defeated the unprofessional renegade soldiers of the Armed Forces Revolutionary Council and the RUF. Those who bore the greatest responsibility were indicted and brought to justice. Sierra Leone is now a peaceful country. The British recognized that the Republic of Sierra Leone Armed Forces had pockets of excellence and separated the sheep from the goat. My message to us Africans is that the civil war in Sierra Leone has proved beyond doubt that the power of juju or the gods of, the, of those spiritualists are limited. All the fighters who ignored professional military training, tactics, techniques, and procedures, and openly faced bullets and bombs are dead. To the international community, one key point I want you to take away is that evil prevails when good men fail to act. 
as it was with Israel. The problem of the children of Israel was not Goliath. The problem of Israel was that David took a long time to act. Therefore, please act now and do more to support African militaries in their strive for professionalism. Help develop our capacity and capability. Sierra Leone is an evidence of what the world stands to gain with military professionalism. First, the bad guys will be defeated and brought to justice. In Sierra Leone, those who bore the greatest responsibility, such as Charles Taylor, Fode Sanko, and their senior commanders were indicted and brought to justice. Second, Africa will not be a safe haven for bad guys like ISIS, Boko Haram, or Al Qaeda. Third, the number of professional peacekeepers in the world will increase. Today, Sierra Leone is a troop contributing country. It has contributed to ECOMOG, the African Union, the United Nations, its light infantry forces led by competent and highly professional commanders and staff officers are helping to uphold the international world order and to make the world a better place. Fourth, we have served in Darfur, in Sudan, in Somalia. We have also military observers in Mali. We had them in Lebanon. We had them in Nepal. We helped in East Timor and the like. Down to Africa, we have officers in various appointments at the ECOWAS Standby Force Headquarters in Abuja, Nigeria. So let us trust the Almighty God. Let us embrace professionalism. Let us invest resources in better equipment, training, and professionalism. That way, we will secure ourselves, our nations, and the world will be a better place.